No you guy. What's the messiest dear? Good afternoon, good morning, good evening everybody and welcome back to the channel on what is a very beautiful, crisp, blue sky day in October. I can't say the same thing for how it was 58 years ago to the month on this road because this road is where the Moors murderers, Myra Hindley and Ian Brady lived and carried out some of their heinous and sadistic crimes. This is Waldobrook Avenue. Myra Hindley and Ian Brady lived just around that bend which I'll be showing you very shortly. 60 years ago, the Moors murders began. And 58 years ago to this month, it finished. All because of a fatal mistake they made by trying to bring a third person into the Moors murders. The final murder was witnessed by David Smith. <laughs> This is where it all unraveled, and that final murder took place right here at number 16, Waldobrook Avenue. So this is Waldobrook Avenue. It wraps all the way around this little estate. And again, it's a really, really beautiful day today. It wouldn't have been like that back in the 60s with what happened in the house I'm about to show you. This was a house that Leslie and Downey was tortured in and was gagged in and this was where Edward Evans was murdered right there that empty plot was number 16 Waldobrook Avenue and the house that you can see right there that's number 14 16 was demolished, but you can see where it was. So that's it. That's where Myra Hindley, me and Brady sat, talked about their sick games, talked about their sick plans, fantasised over what they were going to do, where they were going to take the children. We're quite close to the moors here. You can see them. I'll get a few more shots where you can see the moors. So they were pretty much living in their fantasy. They could look out of their windows and see the moors and they could see their graveyard, basically. I've done a lot of work on the moors murders. Terry Kilbride, who's John Kilbride's brother. John Kilbride, one of the unfortunate victims who met his end up on the moors. His brother Terry became a good friend of mine. I've made a documentary with Terry about John and about the Moors murders. I've been to John's plaque with Terry in Ashton Market and also visited the graves with Terry, which I'll link down below. Terry's no longer with us, so rest in peace. So let me tell you the story about this house and how the Moors murders ended with this being the final murder location. And that was of Edward Evans. On the evening of the 6th of October 1965, Hindley drove Brady to Manchester Central Railway Station, where she waited outside in the car whilst he selected a victim. And after a few minutes, Brady reappeared in the company of 17 year old Edward Evans, only an apprentice engineer who lived locally. He introduced Hindley as his sister. Brady later claimed that he'd picked up Evans for a sexual encounter. They then drove to Brady in Hindley's home in Waldobrook Avenue. And that's what you're looking at right now. So on that fateful night, they picked him up, traveled right there. They relaxed over a bottle of wine. And at some point, Brady sent Hindley to go and get David Smith. David Smith, who was a husband of Myra's sister. Throughout the previous year, Brady had been cultivating a friendship with David Smith, who'd become in awe, in quotation marks, of Brady. 
he was quite impressionable, David Smith, and Ian Brady had guns and he was older and David Smith was impressed, yet he wasn't a brutal, sadistic child killer. Hindley was getting increasingly worried as she felt it compromised their safety. I think that she felt that David was going to take her place in the Moors murders. So after Hindley went and got Smith, which was only a walk away where he lived, she told him to wait outside. So it's quite possible that David Smith could have been waiting where I am right now. Come at the door when the lights flash. When the signal came, Smith knocked on the door. Come for those miniature wine bottles, eh? You are. He was left in the kitchen whilst they were supposedly going to get the wine for David Smith. All of a sudden, they're screaming, they're swearing, they banging around. She screams, Dave, Dave, help him. Ian Brady was standing over him, facing him, with his legs on either side of the young lad's legs. The lad was still screaming. Ian had a hatchet in his hand. He was holding it above his head. Then he hit the lad. It's very violent. Very, very violent. I heard the blow. It was a terrible hard blow. It sounded horrible. Now, do you believe me? David Smith then watched Brady throttle Evans with a length of electrical cord. Brady sprained his ankle in the struggle and Evans' body was too heavy for Smith to carry into the car on his own. So he wrapped it in plastic sheeting and put it in a spare bedroom with the intention of disposing it later. Now this turned out to be a very important factor in the Moors murders because they'd left a body in the house and they had a witness in Dave Smith. Now, if that body would have left that night, it would have gone up to the moors. It would have been buried on the moors and it may never have been found. The moors murders may never have been found out about. John Kilbride, Leslie Ann Downey and Paul Vin Reed may never have been found. Keith Bennett is sadly still missing to this day. Now, after the murder of Edward Evans, Smith agreed to return the following morning with his dead daughter's pram. Angela's pram? <coughs> it's very dark, this. To transport the body to the car before disposing of it on the moors. He arrived home around 3am and asked his wife to make him a cup of tea, which he drank before vomiting. <coughs> At 6, 10 a.m., having waited for daylight, and he armed himself with a screwdriver and a bread knife in case Brady was planning to intercept him. Smith called the police from a phone box on his local estate, and he was picked up by a police car from that phone box and taken to Hyde Police Station. Say so they've seen somebody killed, sir. Oh, yeah. So you can imagine David Smith walking down on that evening. And he was expecting to go in. He wasn't an angel. He was under the illusion that Brady brought back someone for them to rob, to get some money. Petty crime, basically. He didn't expect a bloodbath or a murder. He definitely didn't expect Brady and Hindley to be responsible for the murder of so many children. There it is. Right there. I'm not going to go up because it seems quite private up there. But that's it. Now in there, in that building, well, the empty land, Leslie Ann Downey was tortured. She was bound and gagged. 
pictures took of her naked and she was tortured in there upstairs you can imagine where it was and she was pleading for her mum she was pleading to be let go but they tortured her Mary Hindley was heard on that tape no motherly instincts kid must have been terrified and that's why she spent some of the last moments of her life absolutely traumatised now there's a very good reason why David Smith stayed and helped wrap up the body he had to get out of that house if he would have shown any fear or any signs that he could spill the beans he was the next person he was going to get the same ending that Edward Evans just had so he did anything he could to get out of that house I suppose I best be getting off don't worry him waking and finding me not there it's crazy to imagine it was all there crazy to imagine that Leslie Ann Downey was there Edward Evans were there and that Myra Hindley and Ian Brady spent their time in that piece of land 60 years ago the Moors murders began 60 years ago to the month and it was 58 years ago to the month where it all ended and it ended right there it's beautiful scenery around here hard to get your head round it's the row of houses there with the end one being Myra Hindley and Ian Brady's I wonder what it's like to live at number 14 at number 12 at number 10 across the road Dave Smith might have walked down this way waited for the flash to go inside the next morning after the Edward Evans murder after what Dave Smith had told the police police officers turned up plain clothed acting as a uh, as a baker as a bread salesman knocked on the door and Mary Hindley said we don't we don't buy bread we don't have a baker and then he said I'm a police officer and they went in and they found Edward Evans wrapped up upstairs that was the beginning of the end for Myra Hindley and Ian Brady 58 years ago to the month the Tower of Cards all came falling down not long after that the house came falling down as well it happens a lot the home of Rose and Fred West was knocked down Ian Huntley's house was knocked down and Myra Hindley and Ian Brady's house was knocked down so too was their chances of killing any more children thank you for watching I hope you learned something today peace out